from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back everyone, this is theCUBE's live coverage in Las Vegas for VMworld 2018. This is theCUBE, we got two sets, 20, 24 interviews per day, 94 interviews total for the next three days. We're in day two of three days coverage. It's our ninth year of covering VMworld. It's been great, I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Our next guest is CUBE alumni, number one on the leaderboard right now, Sanjay Poonin, did a great job today on stage, keynote, COO for VMware, great to have you back. Thanks for coming on. John and Dave, you're always so kind to me. But I didn't realize you've been doing this nine years. It's our ninth That's half the life of VMware. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Unreal. Congratulations. Right? We know all Thank the stories, you. all the hidden, uh, never mind. Let's talk about your special day today. You had a really, so far, an amazing day. You were headlining the keynote with a very special guest, and you did a great job. I want you to tell the story. Who was on, what was the story about, how did this come about? Tech for Good, a big theme of this conference, has really been getting a lot of praise and a lot of great feedback. Take us through what happened today. Well, listen, I think what we've been trying to do at VMware is really elevate our story and our vision, you know, elevate our partnerships. You've covered a lot of the narrative of what we've done with Andy Jassy. And we felt this year, we usually have two 90-minute sessions, day one, day two, and it's filled with content. We're a technical company, product, and we figured, why don't we take 45 minutes out of the 180 minutes total and inspire people with somebody who has had an impact on the world. And when we brainstormed, we had a lot of names suggested. I think you know there was a list of 10 or 15, and Malala stood out, A, because she's never spoken at a tech conference before. I loved her story. And we're all about education. You know, the roots of VMware were at Stanford campus, Dan Green and all of that story. Uh, and you know, you think about 130 million girls who don't go to school. We want to see more diversity and inclusion. Um, and she'd never spoken, so I was like, you know what? I don't, I mean, usually you go to these tech conferences, you've heard somebody who's spoken before. Yeah. I'm like, let's invite her and see if she would come for the first time. And we didn't think she would, and uh, we were able to score that, and uh, I was still a little skeptical, because you never know if it's going to work out or not, so thank you for saying it worked. I think we've gotten a lot of good feedback. Well, but in your first line, I mean, she was so endearing, you asked her what you thought of the text conference, she said, too many acronyms. <laughs> I mean, she just cracked the place up immediately. And you know? then you heard my response, right? Yeah, that was If beautiful. somebody uh, <laughs> tells you a lot of acronyms, why don't you just tell them V-Motion rocks, and she looked at me like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Who, tell well, tell yeah, about yeah. our story, whatever. Real quick, our story, I want to ask you a point in question. Her story, why her, and what motivated you I mean, her story, uh, for any of your viewers, you should read the book, I Am Malala, but I'll give you the short version Incredible. of the story. She was a nine-year-old in the Pashtun area um, uh, of um, the, Sa the, the Scott Valley in, in Swat Valley in, in Pakistan, and the Taliban said it out of an edict that girls could not go to school, your rightful places, whatever, stay at home and become a mom with babies or whatever have you, you cannot go to school. And her father ran a school, Mr. Ziyadun Yusufzai, a wonderful man himself, an educator, her grandfather was, and says, no what, we're, we're going to send you to school, violating this order. And they gave her warning after warning and finally someone shot her in 2012, almost killed her. The bullet kind of came through her head, went down and miraculously um, she escaped, got on a sort of a hospital on a plane, was flown to London and the world was, if you remember 2012, the world was following the story. Uh, she comes out of this and she's unscathed, she looks normal, she has a little bit of a thing on the, on the right side of her face, but she's, her brain's normal, everything's normal. Two years later, she wins the Nobel Peace Prize, uh, has started the Malala Fund, and she is a force of nature, an amazing person. Tim Cook has been doing a lot with her in the Malala Fund, so I think that actually also caught my attention when Tim Cook was working with her. Uh, and you know, whatever Apple does often gets a little bit of attention. Well, great job selecting her. How's that relevant to what you guys are doing now? Because you guys had a main theme called Tech for Good. Why now? Why VMware? A lot of people are looking you know, at this and inspired by it. Tell there the are milestones in, in companies' histories. We're at our 20 year birthday. And you know, I'm sure at people's birthday they want to do big things, right? 20, 30, 40, 50, these decades are big ones. And we thought, let's make this year a year to remember in various different things we do. We had a, you know, a 20 year anniversary celebration on campus. We invited Diane Green back. It was a beautiful moment internally at VMware during one of our employee meetings. It was a private moment, but just with her, to thank her. And man, there were people who were emotional, almost in tears saying, thank you for starting this company. A way to give back to her. Same way here. Um, you know, what better way to talk about the impact we are having in the community than have someone who is of this reputation 
Well, we're um, behind your mission 100%. With anything you need, we love the message, tech for good. People want to work for a mission-driven company. People want to buy we hope so. from mission-driven companies. That data is clear, and the leadership you guys are providing is you phenomenal. Know, we, we had some rankings that came out around the same time. Fortune ranked uh, companies who were changing the world, and VMware was ranked. 17 overall of all companies in the world and number one in the software category. Yeah. So when you're, you're trying to change the world, hopefully as you pointed out, it's also an attractor of talent. Right. People want to come and work here and maybe even an attractor of customers and partners. You know, the other takeaway was from the keynote was how many cricket fans there are in the VM world community. Right now, of course, there are a lot of folks from India in, in, in our world, but who was your favorite cricketer? Was it was it Sachin Tendulkar? <laughs> Clearly you're reading off your notes, Dave. <laughs> our our Sonia's like that's a, a cricket. Dead giveaway, our, right? our Sonia's like a cricket, you know, geek. <laughs> She's like, ask him about Sachin. No, who's your favorite cricketer? She wants Sachin to know. Sachin Tendulkar's way up there. Yeah. Shahid Afridi, the, the uh, person she likes from Pakistan. I, I grew up playing cricket uh, and soccer. And listen, I love all sports. Now that I'm yeah. here in this country, I love football, I love basketball, I like baseball, so I'll watch all of them. But you know, you kind of have those childhood memories. Sure. And the childhood memories were like she talked about, India-Pakistan games. I mean, this was like, I don't know, LA Dodgers playing Giants or you know, Red Sox, Yankees, Yankees, Yankees yeah. or Dallas Cowboys in the 49ers or yeah. you know, uh, Ger Germany playing England or Brazil, I mean, in the World Cup. Whatever your favorite country or team rivalry is, India and Pakistan was all that and more. But imagine like a billion people watching it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it was a nice touch on stage uh, and I'd say Ted Williams is my favorite cricketer. Oh, he plays <laughs> baseball. He's a Red Sox player. <laughs> all right, Sanjay, let's get you on the hot seat. Let's get down to business here. Um, great moment on stage. Congratulations. Okay, Pat Gelsinger, yes, Today on the keynote, talked about the bridges, VMware bridging the, you know, connecting computers. One of the highlights was kind of in your wheelhouse. This is in your wheelhouse. The BYOD, bring your own device bridge. And you were a big part of that, making that that work on the mobile side. Now with cloud, this new bridge. How is that go forward? Because you still got to have all those table stakes. So with this new bridge of VMware's in this modern era, cloud and multi-cloud clearly validated. Andy Jassy on stage, doing something that Amazon's never done before doing something on-premise with VMware is a huge deal. I mean, we think it's a massive deal. We think it's super important. You guys are super committed to the relationship. On-premises, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud is validated as far as we're concerned. It's a done deal. Now, ball's on your court. <laughs> How are you going to bring all that mobile together, security, where is it, Workspace ONE? What's your, what's your plan? I would say that, listen, on the t uh, as I described my story today, there's two parts of the VMware story. There's a cloud foundation part, which is the move of the data center to the, to the cloud in that bridge. And then there's the desktop moving to the mobile. Uh, very briefly, yes, three years of my five years were in that business. I'm deeply passionate about it. Much of my team now that I put in place there, Noah and Shankar are doing an incredible job. So we're very excited, and the opportunity is huge. Uh, I said in my keynote, of the seven billion people that live in the world, a billion, I estimate, work for some company, small or big, and all of them have a phone. Likely, many of those billion have a phone and a laptop, like you guys have here, right? Um, that real estate of a billion and a half, maybe two billion devices, laptops and phones, maybe in some case laptop phones and tablets, okay? Uh, someone's going to manage and secure, and they're diverse across Apple, Google, big option for us, and you know, we're just getting started, and we're already the leader. In the data center to cloud world, you know, Pat, myself, Raghu, really as we sat three years ago, felt like we shouldn't be a public cloud ourselves. We divested vCloud Air. As I've talked to you on your show before, Andy Jassy is a friend, dear friend, and a classmate of mine from Harvard Business School. We began those discussions, the three of us, Pat, Raghu, and myself, with Andy and his team. And as every quarter and year has gone on, they've become deeper and deeper partnerships. Uh, Andy has told other companies that VMware Amazon is the model partnership Amazon has, as they describe who they would like to do business more with, right? So we, we're proud when we do that, um, when we see that happen. And uh, we want to continue that. So when Amazon came to us and said, listen, I think there's an opportunity to take some of our stack and put it on premise. We kept that confidential because we didn't want it to leak out to the world. And we said, we're going to try and try and announce it at either VMworld or reInvent. Um, and we were successful. The part with these projects is they all it inevitably leak. We were really glad like no yeah. press person like sniffed it out. We, I was uh, there's a lot I of speculation. There was no, a lot of speculation, but no one sniffed it out and wrote a story about it, and we were able to have that iPhone moment today, oh sorry, yesterday, when we unveiled it. And it's a big deal because RDS is a fast growing business for them. RDS landing on premise, they could try to do on their own, but what better infrastructure landed on than yeah. VMware? In some cases it would be VMware running on VxRail, which benefits Dell, or our hardware partners. 
and we'll continue doing more and more and more as customers desire. So Andy I'm excited do, about it. Andy doesn't do deals, as you know, you know Andy well, we, as we do. He's customer driven. Tell me about the customer demand on this because this is something that we're trying to get reporting on. I mean, obviously it makes sense technically the way it's working, but you guys and Andy, you guys, and they just don't do deals out of the, out of, out of the blue. I think There's customer drivers here. What are those drivers? Yeah, I mean, we're both listening to our customers and perhaps, you know, three, four, five years ago, they were very focused on student body left, everybody goes public cloud. Like, forget your on-premise, evaporate your, obliterate your data centers and just go completely public cloud. That oh, was true. their message. Sweep the okay. floor. Right, if you went to the first reInvent, I was there on stage with them as an SAP employee, that's what I heard. I think you fast forward to 2014, 2015, they're beginning to realize, hey listen, it's not as easy. You refactoring your apps, migrating those apps, what if we could bring the best of private cloud and public cloud together, enter VMware and Amazon? And he may have felt it was harder to have those conversations with VMware for all kinds of reasons, like we had vCloud Air, and so on and so forth. But once we divest that decision, the conversations had matured between us, that door opened. And as that door opened, more conversations began, jointly between us and with customers. Uh, and we feel that there are customers who want many of those PaaS type of services on premise. Because if you're building great things, relational database technology, AI, BI, maybe IoT type of technologies, if they're landing on premise in an edge computing kind of world, why not land on VMware? Because we're the king of the private cloud. And um, uh, we're very, very happy to have those. We progress those discussions. I think in infrastructure software, VMware and Amazon have some of the best engineers on the planet. Okay. Um, and sometimes we have engineers who have gone between both companies. <laughs> um, so we were able to put our engineering teams together and this is a joint engineering effort. Andy and us often talk about the fact that great innovations built when it's not just Barney go to marketing and marketing press releases, there's true joint engineering at a deep level. That's what happened the last several months. Well I can tell and you right now, the, the commitment I've seen it from an executive level and deep technology, both sides are, are deep and are committed to this. It's go big or go home, at least from our perspective. Question I want to ask you, Sanjay, as you're close to the customer, uh, customers of VMworld, VMware, what's the growth, growth strategy? How do you, if you zoom out, look at down on stage, you got vSAN, NSX at the core. Uh, vSAN J. <laughs> Sorry. How do you not like a product that has my name <laughs> in it, man? Yeah, so, I mean, you got all these things. Where's the growth going to come from? The emerging size, the vSphere going to be the stable, crown jewels at NSX. How do you guys see the growth? Where's it going to come from? Yeah, I'll just kind of look at our last uh, quarter. I mean, if you peel back the narrative, John and Dave, two years ago, uh, we were growing single digits, like yep. low single digits, two, three percent. That was the, you know, the maybe legacy loser description of VMware was the narrative everyone License was talking about. License revenue was flattish, right? right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was. And then now all of a sudden we're double digits. You know, 12, 15, I mean, it's sort of in that range for both product revenue and, uh, so, it's a, it's a, so it's harder to grow faster when you're bigger, right? And what's happened is that uh, we've stabilized compute with vSphere in that part. It's actually been growing a little bit because I think people in the VMware cloud provider part of our business and the halo effect of the cloud mm. meant that as they refreshed their servers, they were buying more vSphere, so that's good. The management business has started to grow again. Some cases double digits, but at least sort of single digits. NSX, the last few quarters grew like 30, 40%. vSAN, last year was growing 100% off a smaller base, this year going 60, 70%. EUC, you know, has been growing yeah. double digits, taking a lot of share from co companies like Citrix and Mobile Iron and others, and now also still growing double digit at a much bigger pace. And some of those businesses are well over a billion, right? Uh, compute, management, end user computing. We talked about NSX on our Q4 earnings call being a 1.4 billion. So when you get businesses to scale, about a billion dollar type businesses, and there are sort of four trending five that are in that area, and they all get to grow faster than the market. That's the key, you got to get them growing fast. That's how you get growth. Yeah. So we focus on those top five businesses and then add a few more. Like VMware Cloud on AWS right now, our goal is customer logo count. Revenue will come but we talked on our earnings call about a few hundred customers of VMware Cloud and AWS. As that gets into the thousands, and there's absolutely that option, why? Because there's 500,000 customers of VMware and two million customers of Amazon. So there's got to be a lot of commonality between those two to get a few thousand. Yeah. Then we'll start caring about revenue there too, right? But once you have logos, you have references, containers, I'd like to see PKS have a few, you know, 100 customers and then we put one on stage today, National Commercial Bank of Jamaica. Fantastic story of mm. PKS, right? I even got my PKS socks for this interview. <laughs> so that gives you a sense as to how we think. There will be four or five that are business at scale, and then a few that are starting to get there, and they become the business at scale, and a few. The nature of software is we'll always yeah. be doing this show, 
because there'll be new businesses to talk about. <laughs> yeah, hardware is easy, software's hard, as Andy Bechtenstein said on theCUBE yesterday. Congratulations, Sanjay, on all your success. You guys are doing great financially. Products looking really good coming out. The, the, the bloom is rising from the, from the fruit you guys are, have harvested now. It's coming together. John, if I could say one last thing. I, I shared a picture of a plane today and I put two engines behind it. There's something I've learned over the last few years about focus of a company. And I joked about different ways that my names are pronounced, but at the core of me, there's a DNA, right? I, I, want, I said on stage, I'd rather not be known as smart or stupid, but having a big heart. VMware, I hope, is known by our customers yeah. as having these two engines. Engine of innovation, innovating product and a variety of other things, and focused on customer obsession. If we do those, the plane will go a long way. Yeah, and it's looking good. You guys, I can, we can say, we've been in the radio event, we've been doing a lot of great stuff. Congratulations on the initiative, and a great interview today on doing tech for good and sharing the story, getting more exposure to the kind of narratives people want to hear, more women in tech, more girls in tech, more, you know, more democratization. Congratulations, and thanks so much for sharing. Thank you, John and Dave, thanks. appreciate being Sanjay on the show. Sanjay Poonin, COO of VMware, friend of theCUBE, CUBE alumni, overall great guy, big heart, and in competitive too, we know that from his Twitter stream. Follow Sanjay on Twitter, you have a great time. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Stay with us for more coverage from day two live here in Las Vegas for VMworld 2018, stay with us.